This is UCSF's infectious disease specialist, Dr. Peter Chin Hong. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Grant. Thanks, Justine. So it felt like we were kind of getting things back to normal. People were getting vaccinated, kids were vaccinated, things were opening up. But this new variant, it, it's concerning since it has more mutations on it and it could possibly be more contagious. Should we be changing what we do every day, going back to like washing our hands all the time? Well, Justine, I think Bay Area residents are already COVID street smart, so there's nothing new that we have to do. We just have to do the same things that we always have been doing. Um, I wouldn't change anything personally, and there are only four words that I have for the audience, which is get vaccinated, get boosted. You know, that's the most important thing. And of course, if it's a crowded indoor setting and you're going there for a long time, wear your mask. Are you of the opinion that being vaccinated will provide some degree of protection against Omicron or, or maybe a lot of protection? I think it's going to provide a lot of protection. Look at this uh, case today in San Francisco, for example. You know, what has not been widely reported is that in contact tracing, they looked at all the contacts of this individual and none of them were actually positive. Speaking to the fact that they are probably not as transmissible if you're vaccinated. In South Africa, the epicenter of Omicron right now, um, none of the people who got Omicron, by one report at least, were fully vaccinated. Uh, they were either not vaccinated, which was 65% of the cases, or partially vaccinated, which was the 35%. So I think with a highly vaccinated area like the Bay Area, um, we're probably, if we're going to see anything, it'll be very mild cases. So the patient in San Francisco that has this new variant was vaccinated, but did not have a booster shot yet. What does that tell us about the effectiveness of the vaccine? And also, does that make boosters even more important now? Or would the booster not made a difference in uh, protecting someone against this new variant? Well, I think it's too early to tell, but I think personally that the booster is great at not even getting infected in the first place. So think of the virus as the enemy trying to get in your house. It's getting in the front gate if you're not boosted, but it will never get in your house because your T-cells are going to kick it out of the house, out onto the street. Delta has been so dominant for so long. Is it possible that Omicron will overtake Delta as the main strain of concern? And does that even really matter? Um, it probably doesn't matter in a vaccinated area, but it probably will be a dominant virus, if not the dominant virus. It's already becoming dominant in South Africa. South Africa was a Delta country until Omicron. So I think if that follows that playbook, we would expect that it would do the same in other parts of the world. Will we expect to see this variant also infecting children? Yes, I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, this will probably be an equal opportunity variant, just like Delta was. Remember, before Delta, we weren't seeing a lot of kids infected. Of course, only 2 to 4% of them go to the hospital. But uh, in the era of Delta and then probably Omicron, if it's overtaking Delta, it will be just, if not more, transmissible. And so that we would expect uh, unvaccinated kids to get infected as well. How well are we doing at getting that 5 to 11-year-old you know, kid age group vaccinated? And, and could Omicron you know, showing up you know, delay kind of getting back to normal, kids being able to take their masks off at school and the like? I hope not, Grant. Um, I think we're making really good progress in the Bay Area in particular with uh, vaccinations of 5 to 11-year-olds. Um, San Francisco uh, above 20 percent, uh, Marin County above 40 to 50 percent now. So I think um, much better even than the rest of the state and the country. I think LA is like around the 10 percent or a little bit higher range. Um, so steady, good progress. I think if anybody's going to do it, the Bay Area is going to do it. And I continue to be happy to live here during the pandemic. Uh, how many more variants are we going to see? Because we're going to start running out of letters here in the Greek alphabet pretty soon. I think Omicron is not the end of the story as long as there are unvaccinated people in the world. Uh, in the U.S., we still have millions of unvaccinated people, uh, every two weeks we're getting a new variant being created. So it's just a matter of time between, before one of them, again, after Omicron, rises to the rogue list or the most wanted list. But you know we're not vaccinating the world, Dr. Chin Hong, and you know the U.S. isn't even vaccinated enough. Uh, you're the voice of reason. Why do you seem so calm here? Well, I seem 
calm because again, you know, inside me, I'm in turmoil about the global situation and lack of uh, vaccine equity. But I think, you know, we do have the technology available and it's just a matter of willpower. I think thinking about vaccine in the world is a really complex issue that has to do with economics and intellectual property and, you know, voluntary licensing. They are making headway with the pills, with uh, Molupiravir from Merck and Paxlovid from Pfizer, where those will probably enter many parts of the world before some vaccines will. But we're doing a crummy job. Um, you know, it's estimated that some parts of Africa won't be vaccinated until the end of 2023. Mm. Well, we'll leave it there. Dr. Peter Chin Hong, thank you for joining us here during Crowd4News at 5.